Wow, few hawk of partners. What a mellow way to end the book. Yeah. The favorite thing I've ever written. Mm -hmm. Oh, what God is here. This is not the end of the book. There's one more chapter about how did I get the $30,000 for us to go back to the cave in the first place? Oh, oh yeah, that $30,000 out of the blue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that made our return possible. I mean, I'm a housekeeper in Berkeley. Scratching out a living out there. <laughs> Rent's so expensive. Uh, well, uh, the return to the cave was made feasible by a gift from my dead, dead, uh, yeah, father and mother. Mm -hmm. They both died at the age of 81 after living faithfully together for 64 years since they were teenagers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My father passed away unexpectedly. He had a heart attack and was helicoptered to Jacksonville Hospital Intensive Care, where he refused all medical treatment, including stents. Dead out of living well. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to go when he was naturally going to go. And uh, my mother left her body. Uh, in a hospice uh, near the family trailer in Lake City. A mere 27 days later, yeah, in Lake City, I am looking after Mom. Mm -hmm. I flew from San Francisco and just moved in the trailer. There's nobody there. Dad's dead. Mom's uh, in a um, hospice. Mm -hmm. Everything, you yeah. uh, know. I get a call. 4 a.m. <laughs> uh, from the Alzheimer's uh, nurse there. And uh, I mean, things are happening so fast that Dad's cremated remains are still on the dining room table in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, my parents, yeah, they lived in a glorified uh, trailer park for. Residents 55 and older in this trailer park, so funky that in the guard room at the entrance, they had a mannequin uh, in full uniform to check people. They couldn't afford a human with a living pulse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My parents, poor, humble, mm. absolutely kind hearted folks. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Death of Dad, unforeseen. So, the following morning, I fly from San Francisco to Florida to take his place looking after Mother. When I arrive in Lake, Cis uh, Lake City, uh, my dad's body is still on a stainless steel gurney in the crematorium. <clears throat> They're backed up. Mm -hmm. uh, just 10 days earlier in Indonesia, I had hernia surgery for $500. Couldn't afford it in the United States. Old fashioned surgery, just cut and stitch, no fancy orthoscopic cameras, all that. You know, but $500 instead of $20,000? Yeah, and I am extremely tender still, I mean, <laughs> from the surgery. For, for an example, I mean, just to get out of the car, I'm driving Dad and Mom's car now, uh, I have to put my hands under, behind both of my knees and swing my legs together under the steering wheel and out onto the street so I can stand up. <sighs> But never mind about me. Yeah. When I show up in Florida, I am the best thing my mother has ever seen. Six days Alzheimer's? Oh, you, who cares? She recognizes me. 
her favorite child, her baby, Alzheimer's unit, <clears throat> oh, totally locked down. I feel completely at ease here because uh, I used to work as a nursing home up in Eugene, Oregon, as a uh, uh, to keep track of 15 Alzheimer's patients at once. <clears throat> On the graveyard shift from midnight to 8 a.m. I mean, you heard about herding cats? <laughs> Cat herders got to be, yeah. But, you know, no problem. I mean, uh, oh, I'm, I'm at a table with mom and, well, the table fills up because they know there's a fun guy here and a lot of people don't get visitors, Alzheimer's or whatever. So uh, we got we got a table full here. And uh, oh, one asks uh, me, is the bus to Nebraska here yet? And uh, I answer, no, it's not here yet. But when the bus comes, uh, can I come with you? And uh, she feels the love and much better and forgets about the bus, yeah. Well, <clears throat> I have a problem. A real big problem. Mm -hmm. Dad Spira will not leave the family trailer. He refuses heaven. I don't know why, but his spirit is stranded inside the house. And, uh, well, this needs a little backstory. Uh, my dad, Reynolds, <coughs> ate himself to death. Gross obesity. Killed him, blew his heart out. Mm -hmm. He was absolutely addicted to sugar. I mean, he'd take whole Dutch apple pies into bed with him while he watched football on TV. Totally addicted to sugar <laughs> and television. Yeah. But what he loved to do was play his keyboard and make gospel tapes, and give them to everybody he he ran into. Like the guy who handed him his hamburger at Burger King. Oh, here, have a gospel tape. <laughs> yeah, they were known around town as uh, weird search of people. <laughs> And I'm their son. Yeah. Well, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm living in the trailer, and what the Tibetans would call uh, his hungry ghost. <laughs> hungry ghost uh, haunting me to what? Eat for him. This is not a casual possession. I mean, it can be like getting towards midnight and I find myself in the car driving to the last uh, supermarket open in Lake City. Well, actually being driven to do what? Score a half gallon of peach ice cream and a Dutch apple pie for dad? I... I balloon up 10 pounds in, in the first two weeks on dad's crash obesity diet. You won't read about that in any book. Uh, my mom, uh, Happy Helen, and I are psychic. We talk to spirits. <laughs> no big deal. So I talk to the spirit of my father and say, like, hey, dad, uh, why don't you go to heaven? You know, I came from California to help you do that. Uh, I mean, I am the past master of dozens of hip California workshops. I'm talking landmark education, you know, a, a blossoming of Est, Orner Warehouse, did all those courses multiple times. Not to mention the Human Awareness Institute at Harvard Hot Springs. 
in Northern California. You got nine levels of that, huh? They cost about 500 bucks each. But the food's so good. Uh, yeah, I did all those. Uh, something multiple times. And let me tell you about the Tantra workshops I've done. You know, that's when Dad cuts me off. His spirit says, look, uh, son, uh, I am afraid <clears throat> to leave the trailer without helping you.